This is part two of the Luminar AI editing tutorial. If you haven't seen part one, I'd go and check that out first. This maybe makes sense. Let's dive right in. So the first consideration I'm going to make with this is I'm going to reset it from Forest Stream. So I'm going to go down here and reset adjustments. And that's it back without any templates. And hopefully you saw that, hopefully my face is not down around here and it's down under your template. I'll run through that one again just to show you where it is to reset it. I'll just take Big City Lights and Frosty. So there we go. I don't like that, I want to reset it. Go down here, and right now that should just be below me. Click there, reset adjustments, and that takes it back to the image. This is when you are working from Lightroom into Luminar AI. If you have imported a single image in, the adjustments will be down here on your panel view, on your images, and you right click in there and it will say reset adjustments. So that's what you can do in there. Right, let's get back on with this one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to jump in to the edits. First thing for me is AI Enhance. So I'm going to enhance the sky. And I'm going to take that just to a nice point that I'm happy with. I am aware that I am not so keen on blues in these images. But because of the blue that was in the sky, I don't want to pull it back too much. So I'm going to leave it for that just now and go through the rest of my edits first. So if I take that to there, it brings in the more blue. So I'm going to hold that back for this image. Then I'm going to go into Accent AI. And you can see what I'm watching here is the clouds in the background. It is a global edit, so it's affecting everything, but what I'm doing is I'm watching the clouds in the background here mainly. I'm quite happy there. Right, next thing is the structure. I'm going to push the structure within this image, and that might just be what I'm looking for. I'll just turn that on and off for a second. Yep, I'm quite happy with that. I'm going to leave the colour for now. I'm going to put all my edits in and then go and play with the colour with this. I'm also going to get into details and I'm going to push the small details. And they have worked quite well. If I flip that on and off, hopefully you should see a slight difference. And it is the finer details I'm working with here. I don't want to get into the medium or the larger details. Next, I'm going to get into landscape, of course, with this. But again, you don't have to use landscape in this. So I'm going to push the golden hour slightly because it was shot during the golden hour. And as I say it last night, or yesterday it was like this, today it's raining outside. So that's how much the weather can change. Uh, and here we go. I'm going to get into dehaze. I'm going to dehaze it slightly. I understand that dehaze will strengthen the blues as well but I'm watching what's going to happen with this. So if I push that to there, it's too much. So again, subtly do it. And there we go. Quite happy once more. I'm going to get into the creative panel and there is nothing here that I'm, that's jumping out at me to use with this. If I wanted to get into the mood, I could get in and use the lots, but perhaps the toning I may want to get in and play with the toning in here. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to push the saturation in the highlights slightly. So you can see what happens there. A lovely blend from the blue into the magenta. But I'm going to just put it in and no more. Just to about there. I can pull that back or I can push it even further. But I'm going to just again subtly I like my images, unless it's my composites, to be as near as natural as possible. Shadows. Let's just see what this is going to do with the shadows. It lifted them too much for me. So I'm going to go a bit there, and again it's added a tiny bit of magenta into the shadows that I didn't want. So I'll just go for one with this. You can see the change. If I do that, you can see a, a massive change. So I'm going to go to about one there. Balance. We're now going to balance the image just to see what it does. So what I like to do, instead of being subtle with the edits, what I like to do is push it to both extremes in case there is a mid-ground that I really like between them. 
Now I kept saying about the magenta and pulling back the magenta, but I actually like when I go into the highlights slightly, the magenta showing through. So that's the balance of the two of them coming in there. And I'll just take it towards the highlights ever so slightly. Quite happy with that. I've now got magenta coming up through the sky. Again, quite happy. Nothing else for me in here. Now go into the pro panel. And we've got different things that we can do in here. We can cone and stamp, dodge and burn, colour harmony, super contrast. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get into the colour harmony. And I'm going to open everything up here so that you can see everything that's there. And what we're going to do is we are going to play around with the colour contrast first in this case. right? I'm going to push that slightly and you'll notice what's happening in the background with the clouds. We can push them right out of the image, which we don't want to do. So the colour contrast, I'm not going to touch. Split colour warmth, do I want it warmer in the highlights? No, because of what it's doing to the sky. Do I want it cooler? No, again, because of what it's doing to the sky. The shadows, though, I want to add a little more blue into the shadows. So what I'm going to do is push that slightly and you'll see that change and that hardly, I hardly moved that there. So that was three. I could add a little cyan into it as well and that will bring it down. If I flick that on and off, you should see a subtle difference. And the main part of that is in here and round all the shadows here because I'm trying to draw you into the image. So I actually want to darken the foreground here as well. So I actually may add more to this. Now this is the first time I've edited this so I do apologise about the time with it. Played around with other things last night and templates and everything with it but this is the first time I've edited it as a straight image. So I'm going to leave that at that. Brilliance and warmth. Now I can cool the image down like so and that looks okay but it's not real to the scene for me and I can warm it up again. But yet again, it's playing around with the sky too much. Yes, I am aware I could go in and mask this, but I'm trying to do as much as possible without masks at the moment. For me, that's all I'm going to play with in here. It's just the shadows. The highlights, I'm not. I could add more yellow into them, but it plays with the sky too much, so I'm not going to. Now I'm going to get into the super contrast, and this is where... Fingers crossed the magic will start to happen with this image. So if I push the highlights here, right, if I go too far with that, you see what happens there and the colours in the sky just become a mush. So I'm just going to push them again subtly and then go into the mid-tones. Again, push it all the way just to see then pull it back. And then go in around about there. Right, shadows contrast. Too much. Don't need to touch it. So, yet again, happy with that. Happy the way it's, it's progressing so far. Everything's sitting there the way I would be happy to work with this image. For me, the blues are too much. I'll deal with them in a minute. So I'm now going to jump back to the Essentials tab and I'm going to get into the light. And this is where I'm going to play with the temperature, the tint, exposure, smart contrast, highlights and shadows. Now that I've got the image where I want it, so the first thing I'm going to do is a smart contrast, which adds more magenta as well. You can see how much that changed the image there. I'm going to reset that. So there you go. You can see that just that was a subtle edit, but it changed it enough. And you notice that what it's doing here is it's dragging this in. I'm getting more magentas down here and more magentas throughout the sand. So for that, I'm quite happy. I can go up and tint them later. Highlights, I could pull them back. And there we're getting more in the sky. So you can see why I waited slightly before going into the light. Probably one of the last things for this style of image that would do. Yes, it is increasing the blue. I'm actually not too bothered with the blue in this one though. Shadows, so let's take them down. And let's push them back up there. Am I happy with them? No, because there's another effect that I can add in here that will deal with the shadows for me, or it will deal with the foreground element for me. Right, exposure. I'm quite happy with the exposure. I could push it slightly, but I've just edited the sky, so why would I? 
I could pull it back slightly, like so. Is it working? Let's see. Before, after, before and after. So you can see how much magenta is in this image now that we have edited that. There's quite a lot of magenta. The sky, the blue in the sky, to be honest, doesn't bother me too much with this one. But we'll keep playing around with it for now. I could go in and add more magenta in or I could try and balance it out. So what I'm going to do is reset it and just bring it back slightly and then warm the temperature up slightly. Not too much though, because I don't want it to blow out the sky here. Highlights, I could pull back further now that I've made that edit. Yep, okay with that one. Right. One of the final things I said I was going to do with this was I was then, once I was quite happy with the image overall, I said I was going to get into the colour. And what I am going to do is I'm going to get into the colour and into hue, saturation and luminance. And I'm going to fade the blue at the top slightly. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go, going to go into the saturation of it and I'm going to pull the blue back. Right, I know that this affects the entire image overall because it's a global edit. I want there to be blue up here, but I don't want it to be as vibrant as it was, so I'm pulling back the saturation. But because that's edited the entire image as a global edit, I only want it to affect that area up there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get into the mask option, and you've got paint mask, radial mask, or gradient. In this case, I'm going to choose the gradient because I just want it to fall in and no more. So if I do that, now we've got a lot of other things going on here that make up some of this. So if I do that, you can see the difference in the blue there, just to let you see it happening. I'm going to pull it down this way because I don't want it to affect too much of the image. While that's on there, I am going to turn that off and then I'm going to watch again and now I can pull that back, you can see where the gradient is. So I'm going to pull that back just to around there. That I'm a lot happier with when it comes to the actual blue up there. I like the magenta that's going on around here. I do actually really like that. So I'm going to stick with that for this. So for me, I've done with this, it's taken a wee bit longer than a template, but at least I've had the entire control of this. Last but not least, we're going to get in and look at the composition of it and crop it. So we have in the composition panel, we have a ratio, original ratio, and I can drag it in from any point and then move it up. But let's go for just a normal print size. So I'm going to reset that. And I am going to go for, let's go for 8 by 10, which is 4 by 5. So we've got the lead coming in through here, up to the middle there. Let's try and centralise it, just to around about there. So we have that, and if I click Composition again, that will crop it to there. Simple image, quick to shoot, longer to edit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to add a gradient in Lightroom. So I'm going to click Apply here. This will drop back into Lightroom for me. And here I am back in Lightroom. What I'm going to do is I am going to get into the gradient tool and I'm just going to add the gradient in here. My preference, that's why I'm doing it in here. And I'll just turn that exposure down slightly. Just there, just enough to draw you into the image. Uh, I could also, if I wanted, lighten that area there like so to, again to draw you into the image so there's not much of a difference there I'll just close that down so there's not too much of a difference there except from the point of view I'll put in a reference image and there we go so there's the image that we brought in and this is now the image we have so you can see there is a difference yes there's more magenta in the vibrancy and everything is there but I actually quite like the finished effect even the blue at the top of this so that's one way of working with Luminar AI as a plug-in for Lightroom 
Hopefully you enjoyed that video and hope, hopefully it lets you see that you can edit your images without using templates. And that goes against the grain in a way, I suppose, because Luminar AI is built to pr produce quick images. If you're like me as well, I can see the use for it and I can see it in many, many cases. I actually have a couple of shoots coming up that I'm going to be using it specifically for. But I really enjoy my editing side. I really enjoy sitting in front of the computer and spending more time working into my images. This one I have done relatively quickly, although it probably doesn't look that way in the video, but I have done this one relatively quickly. I like the time spent in the scene. That's for me, but that's a personal choice. Not everybody wants that. And the fact that the AI technology can produce brilliant results really quickly is a good thing. Hopefully you enjoyed that and hopefully, as I say, it does seem as if it's going against the grain instead of creating quick images, I've taken my time in editing an image. That's a personal choice. That's entirely up to you and you can't be judged for that anyway. If you want quick results, Women REI will give you brilliant quick results. If you, like myself, enjoy editing and enjoy the process of editing and don't really need quick results, it's still software that you can use within your workflow very, very easily. Series of videos coming up in the same vein as this one. Uh, they're entitled Under the Hood. I'm just finishing them off at the moment. Yes, there will be videos in the field as well, and not just the editing videos, because I need to get out. But due to the current circumstances and lockdown, I haven't been able to get out too far with them. So last night was the first time I've actually been out in ages to get photographed. So... Hopefully you like the image. Remember, stay safe. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.